smooth Like a motherfucking otter's belly Watching telly in my socks until I pop an ecky Got the shetty by the bottom of the box of reckies When I die you'll probably talk a lot And when you stop forget me I rang the doctor like a motorcycle It's called acrylic snail Um <laughs> Cause uh, my well, no, I'm not going to tell you why, it's just, it's called acrylic snail. Shouts to Hinks and any pig tried to catch me. Weed bags, graph beak and every bit of pasty. Well, Beef slaps, dad freaks, geese. I don't think, rather than bang out loads of like singles and little bits all the time, you should just remain a bit elusive and just focus on your project. And that normally takes me about two years. So it's just a normal gap for me, really. I think this gap has been a little bit longer because I've just been fine combing it a bit. But like... I think two years between whole albums is a nice a nice amount of time. Like you don't just want to be rabbiting on all the time, do you? I want the project to have impact, so I kind of I don't want to appear on everyone else's shit while my own album isn't out because when you drop yours it's not there's not much anticipation there. Yeah, I like to hide it all and keep it till it's ready for release time. I'm sitting on a fuckload of music at the moment as a result of it as well. So I like to stack at Arsenal and then bang, 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 release a bunch of shit. So, yeah. I'll make, I'll smash a curry. I'll make a fucking good curry. You should see my spice rack. It's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit more sinister. It's quite a sort of dark album. It all sounds like nighttime for some reason. For some reason it's come out quite sinister. There's a lot of um, different sort of, different style of beats on there. I mean, you still get the classic some of the classic sort of stuff attitude wise I've grown up a little bit I think <laughs> so like there's a bit more there's a bit more understanding of life a bit more you know I'm not confused like screaming maniac anymore like I don't like I don't want to like stamp on shit as much and just pointlessly piss people off you know like kind of yeah it's a bit more for me I think this album than it is catering for any kind of like wide entertainment purpose it's just a bit more like me exercising some shit and trying to work with different people and experiment with different sounds and styles of rap and shit yeah none of them are important it's just fucking <laughs> I couldn't answer that. Maybe some fans might be able to say that one was your most important album, but I don't think my music's important. It's fun. It's fun to listen to, and it's just music, isn't it? It's for, it's for, people forget this. Music's for entertainment, primarily. That's it. You're an entertainer. You're there to entertain people. You're not a politician. You're not a fucking moral compass for all ex If you search in hip hop for your moral compass, you need to see someone, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> it's cool that you might learn something from it, but, I don't think it's. I don't. I don't feel like my music's important for the people listen to it or don't and enjoy it or don't like. It's, you know. Oh, like, I just don't even reply to that sort of shit, man. Like, like that's stupid. I don't know. It's rude and. Uh, a free beat, I mean, it's not about even the money, it's about me protecting my empire. <laughs> it's about, you know, if you just dish out music to any Tom, Dick and Harry, you can't always trust them to package it correctly. Like a lot of people will say, I'll oh, give me a free beat, and I'm like, well, that means you think it's valueless. So if I give you a free beat, are you gonna treat it with the respect? I know if I put 10 grand into a single, I'm gonna get that money back because I'm gonna press vinyl, I'm gonna shoot a video, I'm gonna get some artwork together, I'm gonna do the whole thing. So like, if you want it for free, that tells me your plan with the music isn't that big. Uh, so I don't, you know, I, I, it's not about like, being a tight cunt or wanting to capitalize on it, it's about wanting someone to respect the music you're making for them. And if they're not prepared to invest money into it, then they're not prepared to invest money into it. And that means after they've got the beat with the, with the whole package, like if someone isn't doing it properly, then you need money to, to package something. And I need to package everything I make. I don't just want my beats getting uploaded to SoundCloud or put on Instagram before like they finished all this kind of bullshit, man. I never sell beats to anybody. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't want to work like that. I want to work on a project with someone, and then we negotiate a percentage split based on how well it does, not, 
not just like shotting beats willy nilly one time so they're gone and then that person just owns it to go stuff. You're not going to do as good a job with my music in terms of packaging it as I am, so we're going to have to work together if you want me to produce shit for you. <laughs> Bottle of gin, bottle of gin these days, yeah. I like this, what I like to drink at the moment. I like to get uh, a bottle of gin, ice, put, hang on, now let me get this right. Yeah, gin, elderflower cordial, cucumber, bruised mint, ice, and sparkling water. And that's a road drink. I've got a little funnel that folds flats like this. So I keep it in my bag, I pop it out, this little road funnel, and you slip that in, and you are, you're, you don't have to just, if you're drinking an off license, you don't have to drink Tisky and Stella and all this shit. You can literally get a road funnel and a vessel and you can just put whatever you want from the offie in your drink. So yeah, I like to I like to class up. I like a cocktail, I like an expensive cocktail, but I don't like to spend money on an expensive cocktail. So go offie and get the ingredients. All free.